Robert, your little brother Winston just got accepted into med school. Oh, hey, Mom. Yeah, I just heard. Winston told me. I congratulated him. Me, Winston, and your father are going out to a luxury sushi restaurant to celebrate the good news tonight. Um... Obviously, you won't be joining us. All the reviews online said that this is the most luxurious restaurant in town, so it's clearly not appropriate for someone like you. You will, however, be footing the bill, so I expect you to make your way down to 5th Street the moment I message you to let you know we're done eating. When you say the most luxurious restaurant in town, do you mean sushi-licious shenanigans, by any chance? You know, the place famous for being three times as expensive as most other luxury restaurants? Of course. Unlike you, his moronic high school dropout big brother, Winston is intelligent and hardworking. He's by far mine and your father's favorite child, and we intend to reward him for his efforts. You intend to reward him? On my dime? You've got some nerve. I thought you promised to stop doing this once I agreed to cover your debt repayments. I don't see what that has to do with anything. But if you must insist on dragging it up, I think you should be grateful me and your father are granting you the privilege of repaying our debts. Think about it. Now you have a reason to drag your worthless backside out of bed in the morning and go to work. I won't be hearing another word of complaint out of you, boy. Do you hear me? If you know what's good for you, you'll keep your mouth shut and carry on working like a dog to support your beloved family. I see. Hey, B Pro, is now a good time? Winston? Why are you messaging me we're in the same house, you big doofus? I don't want Mom and Daddy to hear what I'm about to say. Really? That was dramatic. All right, well, fine by me, I guess. Listen, Robert, I'm thinking of giving up on becoming a doctor. Whoa, where in the holy frickin' Jesus balls did that come from? Did I eat magic mushrooms without anyone telling me or something? Why would you do that when you only have a year left before you graduate med school? You're almost done paying off mom and dad's debt, right? Yeah, actually I am. I should be done with the last repayment right around the time you graduate. But why? What does that have to do with anything? It's mom and dad. They told me what their plans are after I graduate and become a doctor. They said they both plan on quitting their jobs and having me provide for them for the rest of their lives. What the heck? And that's only what was actually said to me directly. When I left the room, I overheard them planning a bunch of expensive vacations and to buy tons of crazy expensive branded goods and accessories. House extensions, exotic labradoodles, vintage whiskeys, gold-plated toilet seat, a Ferrari, you name it, Robert. They're planning on buying it all with my money. I have no idea why they think they have an infallible right to my salary, but there you go. Jesus, bro, what am I even reading? They don't seem to have any idea that it'll still be an intern for at least a few years now that I've left med school. Which means I'll be on 40k a year at best. This probably goes without saying, but I'll be making way less than you do, right? Yeah, I guess so. Mom and Dad love to harp on about how being a high school dropout makes me a failure. But it was thanks to that I was able to start working so early. I've been at my company for 15 years now. I'm in an executive position and get an extra allowance for all the qualifications I've acquired over the years. Plus, I have the extra money I make from the side hustle I started seven years ago. Right? That's what I thought. Exactly. That's why I'm so astonished they managed to convince themselves I'm going to be rolling in cash the second I get out of med school. Robert, listen. I want to move out of this house. Wow, are you serious? Are you really surprised? You want to leave yourself, right? They've put you through your fair share of crap too, haven't they? Not least among it, forcing you to drop out of high school so you could pay off their gambling debts. 
and then having the nerve to give you crap for being a high school dropout? Yeah, I guess you're right. The only reason I accepted to take over the repayments is because Uncle Joe was the one who lent him the money. Which means I never had any legal obligation to pay. That's not all. You cover my med school fees too, and I know that can't have come cheap. It's only thanks to you I was able to get in without going into debt myself. You're the one I want to repay my debt of gratitude to, Robert. Not Mom and Dad. To be honest with you, they make me sick. Being unemployed despite being fully capable of working would be bad enough on its own. But now they're demanding to provide for them for the rest of their lives? What am I? Freaking walking ATM? I can't get out of this house a moment too soon. Winston. Come with me, bro. What do you say? I know this might sound weird coming from me after I relied on your money so much. But you have a right to be free of our deranged parents too. To tell you the truth, I've been thinking about it for a while. Here's how the plan looks right now. I'm thinking of quitting my job at the insurance company and going freelance once I get done with mom and dad's debt repayments. To put it simply, I'm thinking of making my side hustle my main job and focusing solely on that. I see. I guess me graduating med school ties into that too since you won't be covering my tuition fees anymore. Your outgoings are going to drop down in one full swoop so you'll be able to make things work with just one job. I like it. Yep, you pretty much nailed it. When I'm a freelancer, I'll be able to go anywhere I like since I'll be working 100% remotely. Anywhere? Basically, what that means is that no matter which hospital you end up working in, no matter which state you end up moving to, it'll always be possible for me to be close by. Oh yeah, you're right. Obviously, from my perspective, I'd appreciate it if you chose somewhere with decent internet. <laughs> gotcha, bro. We only have about a year left before this becomes a reality. Yeah. Let's make the necessary preparations. Got it. Excuse me, Robert. You have one week to get your things together and get out of this house. What the hell? Where did that come from? Your little brother's a rich doctor now, so we don't need your pathetic high school dropout salary anymore. What? What's that supposed to mean? Do I have to spell it out, Dumbo? It means Winston will be looking after me and your dad from here on out, so you're no longer necessary. Get out of our lives and never come back. Winston's going to provide for you both as a medical intern? How the hell do you expect him to do that? That's not fair, my brother. He's about to enter the workforce, and with that, one of the toughest periods of his life will begin. You expect him to take care of you guys at home as well as the mountain of work responsibilities he's inevitably going to end up with? And what do you know about anything, you pitiful high school dropout? It might seem impossible to you because you earn breadcrumbs, but unlike you, Winston's actually going to have a respectable income. He's a doctor, you moron. I quit my job because with Winston's salary, I can get by without working. Whoa, 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 whoa. Say what now? You quit your job? No way. Did Dad quit too? Of course he did. We recently got word that you got done paying off the last of our debts, so what with that and Winston finally becoming a doctor, we saw no need to continue. No matter how you look at it, there's zero need for either of us to work again for the rest of our lives. Hmm. I take it your sulky tone means you understand, then? Fantastic. Now hurry up and start packing your things. Oh, one more thing. Me, Winston, and your father will all be going to the most luxurious sushi restaurant in town to celebrate him finally becoming a doctor. Make sure you come down to the restaurant to pay for our meals as soon as I message you, just like always, okay? Do I make myself clear? Are you for real? You just kicked me out of the house and ordered me to get out of your lives forever. Why would I pay for your sushi? Are you insane? 
think of this as your final act of filial piety towards your parents who so very kindly raised you. It'll never make up for the monumental failure you became, but it's better than nothing. Make sure you have the money ready by tonight. Do you mind if I say one last thing? What is it? Bye-bye. I'm taking Winston with me. Huh? Winston, you all ready? Yep. I'm all ready at the station like we agreed. Did Mom say anything to you about going out for sushi tonight? Sure, but I told her I can't go today because I have food poisoning. Wow, are they for real? They went to your congratulatory meal at the most expensive restaurant in town without you? No kidding. I'm not going to complain, though. The rotten personalities are giving us the perfect chance to make our escape. I never thought I'd say it, but just this one time, I'm grateful they're dicks. You're right. I'm so hype, bro. I can't believe I finally get to escape their four sushi nights. About that, my buddy from the old company knows a chef at that restaurant. Apparently, he said that he feels bad for you every time you go because they order the most expensive stuff on the menu for themselves. While you just sit there eating french fries all night. Were you holding back because you knew I was always the one paying? There's that, but there's also the fact I'm just not good with raw fish. I thought you knew. What can I say? I guess I really like their french fries. Oh, I see. Anyway, I'm about to head out on the next train. Sure thing. I'll follow you in like an hour, okay? Got it. See you at the next station. Roger that. Robert! Are you there? Robert! What on earth did you just say to the chef at the sushi restaurant? He just told me you refused to pay because I said I never wanted to see you again. Yes, that's exactly what I said. Did you need some kind of explanation? I'm not sure which part is hard to understand. You pretty much just disowned me, so I'll be leaving the house now and moving a long, long way away. Accordingly, paying for your luxury sushi is going to be a little difficult this time around. Anyway, didn't I just tell you to pay for your own damn meals? How are you surprised by any of this? No, I can't. I just can't. Do you have any idea how much the bill came to? Sixteen hundred dollars. Your father and I don't have that kind of money. Yep. Sixteen hundred dollars sounds about normal. That's more or less what I was paying every time. Huh? Isn't it strange? Your worthless good-for-nothing high school dropout son was able to pay every time without issue. But you and dad are struggling? Oh my god. Were you really paying this much every time? I had no idea it was so expensive. Yep. Look on the bright side. At least Winston not being with you today should bring the total down a little. This is actually on the lower end of what I paid. This is the lower end? Robert, how on earth do you have that much money? Answer me this. How long do you think it's been since I started working? What? I've been working non-stop ever since I dropped out of high school. I've had promotions, gained qualifications, undergone transfers, and had lots of other extra allowances added to my salary along the way. When Winston started med school, I started working a side job to help cover his tuition fees. You didn't think I was still making the same money as I was at the convenience store. You didn't think I was still making the same money as I was at the convenience store I worked at when I dropped out of high school, did you? Huh? Now, Winston's done with med school. I'm also done paying off yours and dad's debt, which, by the way, I had no obligation to pay off whatsoever, but did anyway out of the kindness of my heart. I don't need to make anywhere near as much money as I used to now. Which is why I decided to quit my job and focus solely on what used to be my side job as a freelancer. What's your side job? Not telling you. I don't need you showing up on my doorstep begging, thanks. Well, what about the bill for this sushi? Like I said, pay for it yourself. 
But oh, we don't have the money. Bye. Yo, Robert. I'm on the train right now. But I keep getting those damn messages from mom complaining about how you won't pay the sushi bill. Oh my god, is she seriously still harping on about that? I just left her on red. Nice. There's no need to dignify her with a response. Still, I gotta admit, I feel kind of bad for the sushi joint. I think I'm gonna ring my buddy and tell him to pass on an apology later on. Now, don't sweat it. Apparently, Uncle Joe plans on paying this time around. I wonder if he actually will. Don't forget, he was the one who lent... Don't forget, he was the one who lent Mom and Dad all that money back then. I wouldn't be surprised if he never wanted to give him another cent after how long it took him to get his money back. I came clean with everything this morning and finally told him it was me paying him back all along. To be honest, I'd be amazed if he dug them out of another hole after finding out they'd been lying to him for years. Jeez, bro. You sure know how to time things. Nice. Pure coincidence, I swear. Sure, we can go with that if you like. Seriously though, I wonder how they're going to support themselves without either of us around now neither of them have jobs. Mom was 19 when they got shotgun married after falling pregnant with you, right? They've got a way to go until they get their pensions. They have no choice. They're going to have to find new jobs. No kidding. Anyway, my train will be arriving soon. Alright, I'm set on the bench at the platform. Let's head out of the station together. Yeah, how cool is this? Two brothers about to embark on their new lives in the big wide world together? I feel like an anime character. Cut it out, you weeb. You're in the real world now. You're right, though. I'm sure we're going to face tons of challenges from here on out, but there's nothing we can't overcome together. Heck yeah. When I asked Uncle Joe about what became of the sushi incident later on, he explained that by some miracle, it turned out that my dad had just enough money left in his savings account to cover it. So they were allowed to leave the restaurant without cops being called. My old work buddy heard from the chef that the two of them are now officially banned from entering the restaurant for the rest of their lives. Apparently, he almost seemed overwhelmed with joy at the fact he'd never have to tolerate them again. As for what happened to our parents after that, they totally forgot I was the one who'd been paying the rent and utilities, which meant that before long, their electricity, gas, and water ended up being totally shut off. Apparently, the landlord's currently in the process of filling out the paperwork to have them forcibly removed. And that's not all either. Being totally out of cash and being too lazy to work, they went into debt again. And this time, not with soft touch Uncle Joe, but with an underground loan shark who goes by the name of the Finger Snapper. Nobody heard from them after they got disowned by the entire family. Naturally, I have no intention of looking for them either. Hey Josh, I was just curious, where are you right now? Are you in the break room or something like that? No, I'm done with work, so I was going to go and grab some drinks tonight, actually. But why do you ask about that, Mark? I mean, we're only co-workers. It's not like I'm your wife and I have to tell you where I am all the time. <laughs> Wait, what? You're going to go out drinking? Are you serious? Don't you remember what we talked about this afternoon? I told you that I wanted you to stay a little late in the office so that I could talk to you about something. You said that you'd do it. Did you forget about that or something? Oh, that's right. I guess you did tell me that. Well, I'm sorry to say, but uh, I completely forgot about that. Look, Josh, I really don't want to have to be the one to say this, but you do realize that I'm your boss, right? And there have been several times where you've said you understand my instructions and then either forget or ignore them. Oh, right, right. W well, I will say that you're right to want to try and pull rank on me like that. After all, everyone in the office knows that you only got to where you are through brown-nosing. 
Although I will say that I'm jealous that of all the people who started the same time we did at the company, you've climbed the highest. I really don't think that's the attitude you should be taking with this. But look, since you're already out of the office right now, just please make sure that this doesn't happen again, okay? Because I really don't know how much longer I'll be able to cover for you if you keep this up. Wait, what? What is that supposed to mean? What do you mean you're covering for me? I mean that you've really been doing poorly with your job performance, and people are starting to notice. Not only that, but you're going out drinking basically every night, and forcing some of the guys to go out with you, and they're complaining. In fact, that's actually what I wanted to talk to you about when I asked you to stay late today. Hold on a second, you're telling me that those little peons who I grace with an invitation out are complaining about me? I want names. Just who is saying these kind of things about me, huh? I mean it, I really want to know who it is. I'm sorry, but that is just not going to happen. I'm not going to name anyone. And I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with wanting to go out drinking now and then. But there's a line between doing that and trying to force your co-workers to go out with you by abusing your seniority. You do realize that this behavior of yours is even starting to affect their performances as well. I'm sorry, but I really have to disagree with you there. It's the duty of the underlings to go and drink with their superiors in the office. I mean, that's the key to getting a promotion in this world. It's how you got ahead as well, isn't it? So just who do you think you are talking down to me like this? You're not even making any sense at all, you know that? That isn't the issue here, Josh. I'm saying that you need to learn to take no for an answer if someone doesn't want to go drinking with you. It's not just about work, it's about just being an ethical person. So look, can you just do this for me? I really don't think that I'm asking much of you. But I am trying to warn you that we've been getting a lot of complaints at a time when your performance isn't so hot either. Uh, just who's the one who's judging my performance, huh? Is it you? Because if so, then I think I know the real reason for any low marks I might be getting. And here you are trying to lecture me about lording my power and influence over others? You really need to wisen up if you think that I'm gonna take this. Look. Josh, I'm trying to give you a second chance here, do you get that? Hell, it's not just a second chance, it's your third or fourth at this point, really. Do you not realize that your career could be really hurt if you keep on like this? I mean, out of all the people who we started at this company with, you and I used to be really close. But if you think that you can get away with acting like this all of the time, then there are gonna be some consequences for you. I think I'm starting to get it now. You didn't just climb up the ranks by going out drinking with the bosses. You put on this fake friendly face of yours. Well, unlike you, I don't want to have a career based on schmoozing. I'm not some glad hander like you. I want to get ahead in life on my own hard work. And I wouldn't be happy getting ahead in life through any other way, I'll have you know. Oh, just give me a break already, Josh. I mean, really, is that how you think I got ahead? I worked hard, and I earned the promotions that I got. It really is just that simple. If you're jealous of what I've been able to accomplish in my career, then that's on you. Right, sure. Well, anyways, I've got beers that need drinking, so I guess that means I'll have to listen to your little lecture in person tomorrow. See you then. Hey, Josh, did you go home already? Are you not in the office anymore? And if I did, what is it to you, huh? Do you have something you want to say to me about it? Well, if you're already gone, then I suppose there's nothing we can do about that. But I still want you to try and explain to me just what it was that you were doing today. You want to know about what I was doing at work today? Or are you talking about the fact that you realized you were being cheated on and are going to be getting divorced? What I want to know is why you thought it was your business to tell the whole office that that was happening. I mean, really, just what were you hoping to accomplish with that, huh? 
I wasn't really trying to accomplish anything. I was just telling people some news that I'd heard. I'm sorry that you don't like that people know. It's not just some news. And besides, I don't remember saying a single thing to you at all about my divorce. But it's true, isn't it? I mean, even a few days ago, I noticed that you'd stopped wearing your wedding ring. All I did was bring it up with some of the guys in the office while we were out drinking. I guess the news travels fast in a place like this. Besides, it is true, right? I mean, you did get cheated on, and that's why you're getting a divorce now, isn't that right? I just thought it was interesting, so that's why I told people. I thought I told you that I wanted you to stop forcing the younger employees to go out drinking with you. And on top of that, you have no business discussing other people's private lives when they aren't there, or at all for that matter. I am trying to keep a modicum of decorum around the office, and you're making that very difficult. But I never said that I'd give a damn about what kind of silly rules you want to try and enforce around here, didn't I? And do you really think you could talk down to me like this after you got cheated on? I mean, even if you might be good at your job, it sounds like you weren't exactly good at keeping your family together now, does it? I hardly see how any of that concerns you in the slightest, Josh. Well, I don't know what you want me to say. You're the boss, and I just thought the people should know the kind of mental state that you're in right now. Of course, I can't really blame your wife for not wanting to be with you. After all, you really have got nothing in the looks department, especially compared to me. So I can't really say that I blame your wife for wanting to sleep around either. <laughs> Look, Josh, I'm going to tell you this one last time. This is a personal matter that has nothing to do with you at all. And quite frankly, I don't think that you had a single good reason for sharing that information with people from the office. You know, it's because you have this big stick up your ass that you got cheated on, Mark. Your wife was probably just as sick of you trying to talk down to her as we all are of it here. Again, this really has nothing to do with you at all. How about you focus less on office gossip and more on doing your job correctly? Oh yeah, boss, I'll be sure and do that for you. But then again, you know that there are even rumors of you doing all kinds of underhanded things to get to where you are today, right? And people are starting to resent having such a sneaky, slimy boss lording his power over them. Correct me if I'm wrong, but you're the one spreading those rumors around, aren't you? Honestly, what are you trying to even do here, huh? I mean, I thought that we were at least pals who would want to support each other. Well, that was then and this is now. And besides, you're the one who thinks that you're better than the rest of us all because you got a few promotions. So consider this my way of getting back at you for how big your head has gotten. And that's really why you have such a big problem with me? I really don't even know what to do with you anymore. I mean, if you have this much time to scheme and cause mischief, why not just actually do some of your work instead? <laughs> well, maybe that's because unlike you, I'm not going to be the type of businessman who sacrifices his family for his career. That's why you got cheated on in the first place, you know. I really don't even know what to say to you anymore. But I think that we're done here. Just do what you want. But do know that if you keep this kind of behavior up, I'm going to have to do something about you. How about you just worry about yourself? I'm sure that you have plenty on your plate, so quit trying to boss me around all the time. You keep telling me to just focus on my work, but what if you took your own advice and quit bugging me all the time? Okay. Fine then. I guess I'll just do that. Oh, and by the way, I wanted to mention to you that I'm going to be marrying my fiancé soon, so I know that you're probably still all sad about losing your wife, but I'll invite you to my wedding. Great. Thanks for that. I hope that you two are happy. <laughs> well, I won't be the one getting cheated on that much, I can tell you. But I'll see you tomorrow, boss. <laughs> hey, Mark, how have you been lately? 
I feel like it's been a while since I've heard you complain. If you finally learned to mind your own business? You must be in quite the good mood to be messaging me out of the blue. Did something good happen to you? Well, let's just say that I heard through the grapevine that someone was going to be getting demoted soon. I really didn't think that the rumors I spread about you would have been so effective, and yet here we are. Oh, is that what you wanted to talk about? Well, yes, I am going to have a meeting with the department head tomorrow. But I think that we're just going to catch up on how current projects are doing. Uh, but you are more than welcome to imagine up any fantasies that you like. Oh, darn! And here I thought that you were really going to be getting demoted. I was really hoping that these rumors might have finally made the big boss realize that you weren't fit for the position that you're in now. Who knows, it might still happen, and then I'm sure that I'll be next in line once you're out of the way. So anyways, is that all you wanted to talk to me about? I can't imagine you just wanted to waste my time with that. Well, I also wanted to ask if you'd gotten the invitation to my wedding yet. Oh, yes, I got that the other day, actually. But I've been so busy that I haven't had a chance to look at it. What do you mean you haven't looked at it? What are you waiting for? I mean, you're probably at home already, aren't you? Just hurry up and open the invitation. I even put in a picture of the two of us. Sorry, I've just been too busy doing other things. I'll give it a look eventually. But you'll just have to wait. Wait a second, is this real? Are you really going to marry this person? Now I know that you might be feeling a bit of jealousy right now. After all, I know that I'm going to marry a real stunner. And I'm sure you realize that you're so ugly that you could never ever get someone as beautiful as the woman I'm about to marry. Although I'm also sure that your ex-wife was probably as ugly as you are. Yeah, I mean, uh... I guess that you are going to marry a, a really beautiful woman. But I just think that she might have a bit of a nasty personality, so I'd watch out if I were you. What are you talking about? How dare you say that about my fiancé? Just who do you think you are to say that, huh? Well, um, have I not shown you a picture of my ex-wife? Here, I'll send you one. It seems to me like the woman that you're going to marry is actually my ex-wife. How about that? I mean, I know it's a small world and all, but wow, sometimes I still get surprised. Wait a second, just hold on there. Are you telling me that this woman is the same woman who cheated on and divorced you? Does that mean that you're trying to say I was the guy that your wife was cheating on you with? No, 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 nothing like that. She was with another guy before you. But how long have you been together? You made it sound like a time when you talked about her in the office, so maybe you're getting played too. But, I mean, no, that can't be right. My fiancé can't be cheating on me. We're about to get married. She said that she wasn't seeing anyone else when we started dating. Well, I don't really know all the details, but I was pretty sure she stayed with that other guy after her and I divorced. So maybe she just took a little break from that guy before getting with you? Either way, it sounds like she was cheating on us both at the same time. Wait a second. I just remembered something. And don't bother trying to message me. I'll be busy. Of course. I just suggest that you look into this quickly. I know that your wedding is coming up really soon. <laughs> Don't you talk to me like you know what I'm going through right now, okay? I'll be back soon. Hey, Josh, you really need to give this a rest. This is just getting ridiculous. I mean, just how many days are you going to miss work without saying anything? Shut up! I don't care about work at all anymore. Don't you realize there are bigger things going on? You know, the least you could do is call into the office and say that you're not going to come in. You've been causing everyone around here a lot of problems with your absences. This is all your fault. Why did you have to tell me all that stuff that you did the other day? 
I'm sorry, what exactly is my fault? I don't think that I'm quite following you there. How about you try starting from the top and explaining to me all that's going on with you right now? Well, there was just like you said, she really was cheating on me. And now thanks to you, we're not going to be getting married anymore. We've been trying to talk for a few days, but I just... I don't even know what to do. Well, hey, I really do feel you with the wedding. I have been in your shoes before. But I really don't think that any of this is my fault. And I don't think this has anything to do with work either. So if you thought your love life was an excuse to miss work, I'm afraid that I have some bad news for you. You quit messing around with me, man! This is all your fault because you told me all about the woman I was about to marry. I don't see how this could be anything but your fault at all. So the least you can do is take some responsibility. I'm sorry, but both you showing up to work and your love life are your responsibilities and your problems. So I really don't see what I even have to take responsibility for. I mean, if you had this much free time to do all this investigating into your fiancé, you should have called the office. But I just... There you go again, looking down at everyone, and just because you got a few promotions. I don't need you telling me what I should and shouldn't be doing. You know, if it weren't for you, then I'd probably be in your position right now. And then I could have found someone even better to date. So this is all your fault. All of it. Again, I respect your feelings and where you're coming from, but it just simply isn't my fault at all. I get that you're upset and are looking for someone to blame, but maybe you should start with yourself. Okay, really, just who do you think you are talking to me like that, huh? I'll tell you this now, you aren't gonna be at our company for much longer. And just what makes you think that's the case? Because you're going to get demoted, and then I'm going to be given your position. So you can try and play nice all you want. It won't change what I'll do to you once I have your position. I'll make you regret ever trying to interfere in my life. Oh, is that what you were talking about? Well, I'm sorry to disappoint, but I won't be getting demoted. And you won't be getting promoted either. What are you talking about? But... You know about all the rumors that are being spread about you at work, right? How do you think you'll ever be able to recover from them? At the end of the day, all they are are baseless rumors. And no one really thought much of them beyond that, if you must know. Besides, I've already explained to our boss that those rumors weren't anything that I've actually done, but just being spread by you. Of course it took some time to gather the negative proof that I hadn't done what you said. But once I had it, it was all clear that you'd planned this. So then... You mean you were able to clear yourself from the rumors and then the boss was able to see that I was the only one capable of spreading them? Is that what you're saying? Not only that... But he actually wants to talk to you in his office when he gets the chance to. Because now he knows that it wasn't just rumors about my wedding that you were spreading when you did that. But then... You mean, I thought you were going to get demoted! Are you really not? I actually think that you're the one that's going to get demoted. I mean, you wasted so much work time just making up these dumb stories. Do you have any idea all the trouble that you've caused around here? Meanwhile, I really haven't been doing anything at all. Anyways, the big boss wants to see you bright and early tomorrow morning, or else you're fired. I don't have anything else to say to you beyond that, so take care. After that, Josh was called into the department supervisor's office. He was chastised for spreading rumors and wasting time before being fired for missing so many days of work without so much as a phone call. I thought he was just going to be demoted, but he really ended up losing his job. After he was gone, productivity in our department increased by about 50%. 
I really haven't thought much about Josh, his marital status, what he's doing for a living, or where he even is living since then. I just don't have that kind of time to waste. Thank you for watching. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to see more content like this.